In this section, we're going to be taking a look at the binomial distribution. Now, I'm going to be assuming that you've met the binomial distribution as part of A-level maths. So you should already know what it is and how to calculate probabilities. And we're going to just dive straight in. We've already mentioned the binomial distribution as part of the uh, statistics playlist so far. Um, but this section is primarily devoted to how it may appear within uh, the exam. Okay, so before we continue with that, let's just have a brief recap. So the binomial distribution, uh, you've got two possible outcomes. Just like the geometric distribution, uh, you've got success and failure. Either something happens or it doesn't. Okay, so there are only two options, hence binomial. You've got a probability of success, P, which is fixed and constant. Uh, so that's unchanging throughout the problem. And the trials are independent. That's always something to kind of keep an eye out for, especially in context problems. If you're trying to discuss, is the model likely to be binomial or not? Are the events likely to be uh, independent? So one case comes to mind if um, someone was doing something like uh, throwing arrows at a target on a board, for example, then you might suggest that actually with practice they get better. In which case, the more arrows they throw, the better they're going to get, and the probability of success uh, will probably increase. So it's one of those things where you might have to think about contextually, does the model appear to be right or not? Okay, uh, so you might need to discuss that. And of course, with the binomial distribution, the, the number of trials is fixed. So it might say that there are 20 trials or 30 trials. Whereas with the geometric distribution, there was no fixed end. You could keep on going on, on and on, and for, on forever. Okay? But the binomial distribution has n fixed. Now, how we write it is we say x is binomially distributed, and it has these two parameters. Okay, we need both of those, so n, p, and then the probability of x being equal to r, so this is the essentially the formula for the distribution, would be ncr. Now, um, it's written in a way in the MEI formula booklet in the A-level math section at the start, um, so I'll write that down here. So ncr p to the r, q to the n minus r, and that's where q is 1 minus p. Okay, so ncr p to the r times q to the n minus r. Alternatively, uh, I would usually write that down as n choose r like that, and then p to the r, and then 1 minus p to the n minus r. Both of these are equivalent, okay? They're both fine to use. So it doesn't matter which notation you decide on using. Now, as I said, my expectation is that you're able to find the probability of x being equal to 3 or something like that. So an exact probability like that, an equals 2, or um, less than or equal to 3, greater than or equal to 3, greater than 3, all of those. So I expect you to be able to find those probabilities on your calculator um, and to be able to solve any kind of binomial problem in that way, okay, from A-level maths. So in this section, what we're going to do is we're first of all going to take a look at e of x and var of x. Now, e of x and var of x should both have been mentioned in A-level maths. Okay, um, so e of x is n times p, and var of x is n times p times q, or n times p times 1 minus p. So we're going to derive those results, uh, which you probably didn't see in A-level maths. Um, and then we're going to see how the binomial distribution sometimes gets asked within another distribution question.